see so much amazing cosplay. What We Do in the Shadows has had an amazing five season run with its sixth and final season debuting this month. We are very sad about this, but we are not here to be sad. We are here to celebrate the incredible legacy of the show. And there's no better way to celebrate the show than with two amazing, hilarious, talented cast members. So everyone, please put your hands together for Kristen Shaw and Harvey Gibb. <laughs> Start off as a familiar servant uh, to Nandor, and uh, unbeknownst to me, he was a Van Helsing by the end of season one. So that was really nice to see the trajectory. The writers have been really great. We have the best writers. Uh, you know, we have Sarah Beth Collins, Stephanie Robinson, Paul Sims. Everyone's really great. So they've given me so much uh, to play with as Guillermo. So I've been really lucky to have that trajectory. And the guy has. Are you talking about our characters or our own origin story? Both I So I was born on a farm in Colorado. And there wasn't a lot of theatrical arts going on around there, so I had to leave. I went to uh, Chicago, and then I found my way in New York, where I got the job on Flight of the Concords. Who was working on Five of the Concords? None other than Paul Sims, who's uh, been the showrunner of this, and Jermaine, who uh, wrote the original uh, movie with Taika, uh, What We Do in the Shadows. And so, about when they were filming season one, Last Man was wrapping up, and I and, uh, and Jermaine wrote a part for me to play the guy. Yeah. yeah, and it was just supposed to be one one episode, and then um, after season two, Paul Sims decided to bring in a, a storyline of the guy working in the um, Vampire Council and all the administrative stuff that goes on there, so they brought her back for season three, and then I've just been playing around with them here and there for three, four, and five, and then in six. Uh, is there a season six? There is. Oh, oh yeah! Couple episodes in season six. <laughs> <laughs> no, three, four, three or four. And that's it, right? That's it. Yeah, I, I actually that met you while I was filming season one. Yeah. That's how we became friends. And that's yeah. when we, you know, I was so excited to have her. Kristen brings such really positive energy to the set. I do. Like, we should, <laughs> she's so modest, you know, <laughs> that it's lovely to have her. And so every time we yeah. get to play with the guy and have you on set, it really kind of like makes us like, yay! Yeah. Harvey and I clicked instantly over poutine because we shot it in Toronto yeah. and we had a song that we would sing while we were People building our own poutine. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I'm building my own poutine. I'm building my own poutine. Kind of incredible. 
We have an album coming out. <laughs> oh my god, it would be so fun to go on tour with you. Didn't, didn't we come up with a big, there was like a big changeover on a set in the Vampire Council. And we came up with this song about being a country girl not understanding New York. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. I'm just a country girl yeah, in the big city. Yeah, it was a little agree with that. That's our second album. <laughs> you better ask more questions. Yeah, girl, 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 girl. Girl. But, uh, yeah. So, clearly, you guys are great friends. What, what's the most meaningful part of this whole experience now that, now that you've left? Friendships. I think the friendships that you make. Um, I think, uh, you know, same with like Kayvon, like, you know, one of my closest friends now, like, we text every week and uh, it's just nice to be. Well, we can text every week, that's easy. Okay. There's not a lot of work in texting every but, week. But you don't Is that a friendship? You know, is, it, is that a friendship? I don't, I don't, I mean, like, I was just thinking, like, the overall. Oh, no. I feel like we don't, I don't text like every day with Matt Barry, you know what I mean? Like, I don't text him. Like, you know? I don't know. I feel like he's busy, he's always creating music and whatnot. <laughs> Oh, K1, he'll just text me like a random picture and it's like a joke and whatnot. Or Christian will text me and say, hey, I can't come to your party. Yeah, I, can't, um, I can't come to your party. <laughs> um, I would say the friendships are great. And also, what, what was the question, Tiffany? The, question, the most meaningful part of the experience. The most meaningful part. was that we were able to make like a very true, surreal, zany comedy with heart, with hard laughs, with vampires and all kinds of like mythological beings um, in a live action that I, I still pinch myself that I was able to be a part of a project like this and I hope that there will be more of them in the future, in the, in the lines of creativity um, and, you know, otherworldliness and comedy. I think comedy is kind of getting disrespected a little bit these days. It's such a good art form. It's such a powerful, hard thing to do. And, um, and I don't know, it's meaningful to be in a comedy. <laughs> You well, of course, my soapbox. <laughs> you mentioned, uh, it, yeah. You talk. No, I love what you said, because it's true. We get to play, you know, the only human on the show is the Emerald, and every other is a vampire, a different creature, which is really cool to bounce off of. But that's, for me, it was a challenge, because as an actor, you have to be the straight man. <laughs> such a good straight, straight man. man. You are such a lovely straight man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've never so heard. Very nice. Yeah. Because it's so hard with these guys because Yemo has to always talk no louder than soft whisper, so his voice is always here. So it's so hard to act across from them when they're so wonderful and bigger than life and you want to match their energy. You're like, I can't, I'm a human, I'm a human, bring it down. And so for me it was a good challenge and uh, I'm so lucky to have made such great friends and work on a show. Texting once a week. I don't text once a week. I don't text once a week. I also FaceTime and people ignore it. Oh! I you when you were stuck at the train station. Oh, she did. She did train, yeah, I was stuck, I was snowed in. Yeah, and she FaceTimed me to check it, check on me. New question, question. New question. <laughs> I, was, I, I never made out of the train station, station. on the ghost. You did! Oh. <laughs> Kristen, you mentioned um, working in the supernatural. Do you guys have a favorite scene that you filmed with the Supernatural that was interesting or fun? I mean, I always come down, back to the box store episode where the sire um, was chasing us through the city and then into the box store. There's a moment that it's a man inside it and, there, and it's also being puppeteered and there's a lot of uh, elements, but there's the moment where he was like standing on top of like an aisle of, you know, beach towels or whatever it was. And we're at like, yeah, 
was like, this is incredible. This is, yeah, that was a very fun mythological creature for sure. Like the, the genie's good too. Oh, yes. The genie is so funny. But bargaining over the penis. Yes. God. <laughs> one does. I think mine was the night market. I feel like that one was cool. Like we had fairies and witches, like we had everything there, so it was kind of cool. Like we, every, everything we shot there was like, whoa, really cool. And we got to do all those stunt scenes, so it was really fun. Yeah. That sounds really cool. Kristen, you also mentioned comedy. Has there been a bit that you guys have done that got cut from the show that like is your favorite bit that you're just like, oh, if only it made it in? I think one of my favorite early bits that got cut was a scene with Kristen, when I think it was your first episode, we're walking down the hallway of, with the flames on the walls, like the sticks on those. Flames, sticks, fire. Torches. Torches. Wow. Uh, so torch to the wall, and I touch one, and then uh, Kristen turns around, and then you improvise the scene. And you're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, that thing just is like, don't touch the fire. The fire marshal would have a fit. <laughs> But you did it in long video version. Oh. There was a, a take where she did that, and it was so long. It was so good. And I think for time, they made it really sharp, clean, funny. But I liked the one where she <laughs> elongated it, and I, that was my take that didn't make it that time as well. God bless you, Harvey, and God bless the editors. It's <laughs> 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 yours. Oh, man. I mean, there was so much that happened in the club with Nadja that got cut up lots of like club stuff but I can't think of anything specific but there were some big there is a lot they oh they shot a lot they cut a lot that's all a lot of nights a lot of nights that will go um on the show <laughs> the show has had so many guest stars amazing guest stars over the years who's your favorite guest star that you've worked with Real Sophie's choice. I know. I mean, I this season was exciting because we have Michael Bryan from AP Bio as uh, playing a very big part, and then um, also Steve Coogan. I think I can say because he was in the trailer. That was exciting. Um, he everybody is smaller than you think. I think my favorite only because. They were so great and like, we're still friends to the, uh, it's Haley Joel Osment. Yeah. Like, Tom Fur. Yeah. Uh, he's just really lovely and that was really, and, and then to this day, he texts me. <laughs> and he sends me, and he sends me his, uh, his Christmas, uh, he makes these like peanut butter balls for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And he sends those to me. You know who is the, who's been real in touch with me that's got started? It's Mark Hamill. He checks on me too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Chris Sanford, who played Derek. Um, yes, he speaks Italian. Oh, he speaks Italian. Italian. He always, he's always texting me in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> you both worked on the show for quite a while. What were your last few days on set like? Harvey was a mess. I was like, get it together. We have a job to do. Remember? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I think everybody had been told that the show is ending before we started filming, which is unusual. Christmas Eve. It wasn't out that close. It was two days before Christmas Eve. Yeah, and Mark Berry said, Oh, well, Merry, Merry Christmas. Up in Christmas. Merry Up in Christmas. Um, so I think the whole tone of the, not just the last few days, was a little bit like, Oh, it's over. Let's really enjoy it. Um, but it was weird. I like, Especially at the end, like we shot that scene, you and I, and, and Michael Bryan in the library. And they're like, cut, we got it. And then you just hear the drill as they take the set apart. What? Yeah, it's it's just sitting there, like I was about to get out yeah, and the rain was coming down. They're like, we're at it. Well, and then I think at that point, you and I grabbed a whole bunch of books from the library. I didn't grab books, but I, did I got Paul Rubin's portrait. You did not I either. Paul Rubin's portrait. You know I don't read. And, uh, you did. And Stephanie, I got you Stephanie's did? portrait, and she has it now. Oh, I just it. gave it to Garrett this morning. Oh wow! Yeah. That's a that's a nice gift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I think for me it was sad 
just uh, because I won't give too much within the last episode. It's a very uh, emotional scene for Guillermo, and it was a lot. And I talked to Paul about this recently. And I was like, "Did you purposely schedule that to be the last scene of the last day?" He's all, "Absolutely." And I was like, "Why did you do that?" Because it was so much happening in the show, but also we're wrapping this show that's been part of our lives for almost seven years. And to me, it was like so sad and like what was happening with the characters and what was happening with me and like you know and so like it was just a sad all around and last last week or this week i recorded the last a adr for the animal and it was that scene so they have to match the emotion of that scene they just need to change a line to the and you were already over it no i was like i have to get there mentally he's like in two movies no. and he's filming like uh, flying to spain today no, I'm, 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 I was literally mentally getting into it, so I was already crying because I had to get into it. And then after we were done, Yana Gorskaya, who's our director, was like, that's it, you're done with Guillermo. And I was like, what? He's like, that's it, that's the last time I'll ever do Guillermo. And I was like, oh. And I was like, oh. Don't you think there should be a Guillermo Amanda spin-off? Yes. Yes! I feel so tonight. I know for sure they would do it. Also, we would. I would love to. I'll do the last one on that of course, but yeah. No. Wait, no do you sound. buy? Do you, do you buy? Do you, did you just buy this at Disneyland? Yeah, at like Disney World. <laughs> Disney World. Disney World. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, there's no way they would sell that in California. <laughs> 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 no, I'm like, I and I, I want one for myself. <laughs> like it's so comfy, and I went with the green room, and it was so cold. I was like, I want to be comfy, and I feel LA is the only place I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna be comfortable. I live here. I love LA, and so. Things, but Harvey is becoming a fashion icon. <laughs> I, say. Especially I know it's hard actually. work. It's hard work, and you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Sometimes I have to dress up for an event, and then sometimes I like to, like, you know, be casual. You're still dressed. 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 As we head into season six, what do you want the fans to take away from the show? Um, um, just, just, uh, texting. Text yeah. Text your friends. Text your friends. Uh, but I always say just, uh, yeah, just to keep all the costumes and all the, just keep being uh, creative and li living in your fantasies. I think those are the most precious things humans have. And just liking the show is a connection to something greater than us. And not that the show is, you know what I mean? I just think our imaginations are important. And, and I hope you encourage your imaginations for all things. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I mean, I second that. Yeah! I second that. I think that, you know, we have the best fans in the world, and I'm always like, so impressed with how creative. I mean, we've seen, you know, the homoerotic art. And, uh, and it is so good. It's so good. I encourage you to continue to do it. Uh, I encourage you to like be creative. And I'm, I'm glad the show means a lot to all of you. And I'm surprised, uh, you know, that more comedies uh, haven't been doing that where like they make someone feel comfortable enough to laugh but you know this show has brought people together uh brought families that were uh you know not talking for years they, the show brought people together in a, in a weird way that's really nice to see and i love hearing those stories when you come to our table and tell me about like i haven't talked to my dad in like 10 years and this show brought us together or this is the show that my mom introduced talking about Kim's convenience no i'm not talking about, I'm talking about what we do in the shadow uh, but it's really nice to, to see it here and i love all the effort that all of you put, and I'm seeing, you know, people in cosplay, you know, dressed up. You see a Naja in the audience, you see people dress up as the characters, and it really warms my heart because I know that takes time, and it takes time and effort and energy, and I'm just glad that uh, that you connect and resonate with the show. So continue to do that. Even though the show, you know, has ended, the legacy of the show has ended, so you continue to live and be part of this world. So thank you. Right up there. Oh, sorry. Yes. This, this person right there? So, hello. First of all, I absolutely love the whole movie. Like, I just love you guys so much. Uh, this person, sorry, 
sorry, this question is for you, Kristen. We have seen you do so much recently. You've been Louise, which everybody loves. Yep. You've been Last Man on Earth, which is a great show as well. Is this just you playing the characters as yourself every time you do one, or do you like make new characteristics for the characters, or reserve anything else, or are you just like, this is me, I'm from all in, this is how it is? Well, I, ho I hope I'm not like some of the, no. <laughs> I'm such a good actor. Um, I feel like you lean into um, the script, like the writers um, are writing such good, rich uh, material for the characters, and so they're giving me. Are you are you saying I play the same character in everything I do? You know that's my biggest fear. It no. <laughs> yeah, I was just born with this voice, and um... but I think it, I think it's important to, and I, I don't want to step in here, but Kristen is such a brilliant actress yes! that she gets to play so many things because she has such a distinguished voice. But when yeah, her choices please. as a character, like when I see the guy and I see your work on other shows, it's not the same choices. And so when I see her, I'm like, yes, it might be the same similar familiar oh. voice that you have. Heard, but Kristen's choices for each character I've always seen are completely different than the choices from the last character, which is very nice and it's very hard uh, for an actor to do. So I think we should give her credit where credit is due. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Um, I think Next question. I'm going to make a fortune. My question is for Kristen. Uh, what's one of your favorite moments from Gravity Falls? Woo! There's a dipper that got, uh, there's a dipper that got in the, the hat. Uh, copy machine. <laughs> um, my favorite moment from Gravity Falls. Thank you for asking. Um, I mean, I love all of them. I love the one where the boy band becomes gerbil. You know, because I grew up loving new kids on the block. Um, but I also just love the moment where she, not to spoil it, decides to trust her uncle Stan. I think that moment, the way they built it with the animation and everything was pretty huge. Um, and just overall in general, I would say the best, my best moments of, is just being Mabel because she is positive, she is lovely, she is ready to say yes. And, and she's ready to trust. And those are all characteristics um, that are believable in people but are getting a little bit lost in, in what we see. And anyways, I would go into the booth maybe feeling kind of down and I would walk out of the booth after recording Mabel's lines on top of the world. Um, she's very infectious, I think. So I guess every word out of Mabel's mouth is my favorite moment. Oh, I was in an escape room with Jason Ritter, and just like Dipper, he was very good at it. Yeah. yeah. Did you uh, marry uh, Mabel after? Like, who? Myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question again. Who did you marry? Thank you for your question. Um, how about up here, Naja? Naja. So, uh, in, for in the context of like comedies. Um, what sort of, if, if you were able to do it, um, if there was a musical, like theater episode, what would be like your, your go-to, like to spoof, do you think, for your questions? Like any musical, um, it could be Disney, you know, or any musical theater that has been put on stage. So what would be your, your preferred musical episode? Musical episode. <laughs> musical episode. What would be our musical be? inspiration for the characters yes. we're playing on, on what we do with the shadows? If you had done like a special musical episode. We had a musical episode with the, uh, yeah, um, I think, hmm. I mean, probably make Cabaret, um, Cabaret. Cabaret. Cabaret would be great. Yeah. That and, like, Spring Awakening for the other one. Yeah, it's a bitch of living. It's a bitch of living. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's Cabaret. I'm a little, I mean, Cabaret will have that dark tone, I guess. Um, and, yeah, that's what I would say. Maybe into the woods a little bit because it's a little fairy tale ish. And... Good. Yeah. That's a good question. Thank you for your question. Yeah, right here. I think right here. 
with a mustache. <laughs> Sorry, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I have a hat. Ah, Waluigi! could put them in danger, you know? And so when Guillermo came out, he really kind of let them in. He knew he was, but you were bugging him about it. And he did it because both the people that he loved, both his chosen family and both his, you know, uh, a biological family uh, were in danger. His Van Helsing family wanted to kill Naja, and so he stepped in the middle and was like, stop, don't kill her, you can't kill her, and she's not my girlfriend because I'm gay. You know, and the idea that he used it as a shield, and he shouldn't have to use it as a shield, but he did to protect two people that he loved, the family that he came from and the chosen family that he had made. So he used his like self as a shield, and I thought that was so brave of him, but we shouldn't have to use our sexuality, you know, as a shield. We should be able to tell people we're ready, and someone's sexual like orientation is none of your business, unless they want to share it with you. Woo! Hi there. Um, uh, here. I think it's a great question. I think that, uh, you know, just by origin story, like, Latino culture are great storytellers, you know? And I think that we, uh, you know, I remember growing up and listening stories of La Llorona and Chupacabra, like, stuff that you would like, it's it's taught for, like, a lesson. It's like a, this, like, mythical uh, storytelling that happens around a campfire, but also it's taught to, like, teach children discipline and put this, like, it's like, you better not, you point. The you get you, and you're like, I don't want to be the cuckoo, you know. But um, I think that it's, um, I think we lend into it because I think for so long, it being, you know, Latino and also being queer, we're always seen as outsiders and we're not welcome to the party. That we, in the past, we've always felt that we weren't welcome. And so we've created this world where it's like we can tell stories, we are storytellers ourselves of our past and our heritage and our culture. And I think that it's always funny when you think of those monster movies where the people are, who are chasing the monster is a person who's like not, you know, the the person who doesn't belong or 
or the outsider. And for so long, Latino people have felt like an outsider and like they don't belong. So we're the ones being chased all the time, you know? But you have to stop and think about like even the Frankenstein scenario where like when Frankenstein's being chased by the townspeople, who's the real monster? You know, the person who's chasing them or the person who's just living their life. And <laughs> you were just so thought they were so weird and put off by like, oh my god, I don't understand it, it's different, it scares me. So we're scared by things that you know we don't understand, but maybe we just took a time to learn about someone's culture, we see that we have more in common and love of you know horror and love of God and love of fear. We have more in common than we think. Yeah. Well also Frankenstein was written by Mary Shelley. I know. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Hi. Um, oh, yes. yeah. Oh. So, I am a massive fan of both Box Burgers and what we do in the shadows. So, my question is what, like, what member of the Belcher family do you think would get along best with uh, the, uh, what we do in the shadows, like vampires or gear or What do you think would be, like, best friends and worst enemies? But who of the Belcher family would get along best with the um, what we do in the shadows crew? Oh, and instantly Linda. Linda <laughs> would have so much fun with every. She has fun everywhere she goes. Um, she's one of my favorite characters of all time. I think Linda would have the best time. And Louise, obviously, because she's like she would be ready to go like hunting with them and stay up all night. Tina would be in love with them. Right? <laughs> she would have like major crushes on all of them. And then Gene would be pretty oblivious. He might hang out with them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we be friends. And Bob probably would not want to deal. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Where is I've lost Ooh, the mic. Oh, yes. oh, over here. Over here. Is Naja right there? Yes. Oh no, they missed her. Right here. Oh. Look, she's just coming to the front. Naja! Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's a rumor that Abbott Elementary and Oh It's Sunny is going to have a crossover. If you guys were to have a crossover, what show would it be? <laughs> the Bear. Max? <laughs> 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 Who could we go? Max would be fun. <laughs> Comedy with comedy. Yeah, well, like, Why are you laughing? <laughs> Just being in a restaurant. What else? What other? What other? I like that. That would be a really good Pax one. Pax is pretty funny. They yeah. tried to get uh, get into the comedy, stand up comedy world, and because that happens at night. So, yeah, I like that. And then they get into the whole PR of it all and that kind of thing. That's it. Pax. Pax. <laughs> Thank you for your question. I think right here, there's a person. So my question is, um, obviously this is an adaption from the movie, and a lot of times when adaptions happen, whether it's a TV show or a sequel or whatever it might be, the audience is kind of apprehensive and a little like, hmm, I don't know. Um, how did you feel any nerves starting this show, knowing that like you were already having this audience from the movie, and then how does it feel knowing that the show is so successful, and there's some people who might not even know the original now, and they know the show? Great question. I w I mean, I didn't start on the show, you didn't have me, but I will say, I, I think the movie was a cult hit. So there is probably you and maybe your group of friends that knew about the movie. <laughs> um, I hope. Sorry, Jermaine and Tyga, that's not true. But it wasn't like. Oh, coming in over here. No, it's a huge, huge hit. No, so I think I think it because it was beloved but not a blockbuster probably helped for the spinoff to not feel like the hatred of the fans and your hatred is real. <laughs> we feel like it. They feel yeah, there was a fear of going into the show that people who were obviously fans of the movie that like already coming in with like, I'm not gonna like this at all, you know, oh, I can't wait to fall in your face, that thing. We're like, hey, we're in the same world, but we're different, you know, characters. We're not yeah, trying to replace yeah. anyone. And it helped the type engineering and kind of, you know, give their seal of approval. Because they directed a couple of first episodes and it was in their vision. They, they created this world. So they wouldn't pass the baton over unless they 
you know, comfortable. So it was nice that it took, I mean, it took a second. I think that for the first season, people were like, all right, I like it, you know? But it did take a second. Uh, but I think if you, if you liked us, you liked us for a completely different reason. I think that the vibe of our crew and cast is so different. With the movie, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And with us, the trajectory of five seasons, and who knows, you know, how many more you could think of storylines, because you do live in the world where anything's possible. So every season we come back and we have this new year, and we're like, how lucky we are that we have such great writers that every year it gets funnier. It's so funny, we still in this world, we're living and breathing in this world. So. There's a few more women in the TV show. Yeah! Yeah! That part. But that's when we were so excited when you joined the cast. Because for so long it was Natasha and you you know, we were like, we need more female representation. And here comes Kristen! And one more vagina! <laughs> and then we said that. Woo! <laughs> Thank you for your question. Um, I hear in, the, hear in the what we do in the show is shirt. Oh yeah, you got that from oh, San Diego. Uh, San Diego. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for six seasons of an amazing show. Uh, I just wanted to ask, you guys have put so much love into your characters and so much work into the show. What is like a word of wisdom or like a lesson you guys would like the audiences to take away from your characters? From our characters? I mean, I, I would say don't settle for the guy. I would say always know your worth. Yeah, always know your work. I know that like, even though you have a plan ahead of you, you're like, this is the way my life is supposed to be. Sometimes the universe has an even bigger plan that you couldn't even dream of. So always uh, go with the flow, you know, see what happens. Uh, but never, uh, yeah, don't settle. That's a good one too. Love it. Don't settle. Love it. Don't love it. Don't love it. Don't touch it. That's fair. Thank you for your question. Off, off what you just said, um, were you surprised at the big plot twist last season when the plan that Cameron has for the whole show? Like, yeah, changed. I mean, I was surprised when we wrapped it uh, season five and it was like, you ever got what you wanted. And sometimes, like I said, when you get your wish, it's not what the universe is like. You can. It's literally not in your veins. Like, you have been housing and blood running through you. And I think, I, at the backstory I gave you was that he fell in love with the idea of being a vampire because he was bullied a lot in school. And the idea of being a vampire is you get to stay young forever. You, like, immortalize in that, like, age, whatever age that you become a vampire. And you get to live forever, so you have income. You can get income through the centuries. And you wear these fabulous clothes. So he wanted to be his best version of himself, and he thought being a vampire was a great way to, you know, showcase that. But it wasn't that. It was just that he had to deal with his own sexuality, his, his self-confidence, his self-worth, and he wanted an excuse to be able to be all those things. You don't need to be a vampire to be the best version of yourself. You can be the best version of yourself today.
Any thoughts on Bobby? Is, it, is this a movie? My Spy? I do play Bobby in My Spy. Yeah, yeah, the, with the family and they were um, trying to run a game. What's the question? I'll, I'll, I'll think of an answer. <laughs> I know, it's, it's really hard to explain. Sorry, I think maybe my thought just kind of escaped what I was trying to say. It's okay. I like that movie. It's okay. Let's hear it for my spy. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, right here. Uh, let's do one more question up oh, here cool. in, uh, with the hand raised in the white. My family really loves this show. I was wondering, how did it feel to be on set? You know, how, how did you feel like you treated on set? Obviously Hollywood, we know how it is, but I feel like you cultivated such a good environment on the show. So how, how was it for you guys? Oh, thanks for asking that. I will, I just want to say again, you know, Hollywood, you know how it is. I will say, I don't think that's true. I, I think in a lot of my experiences in Hollywood is everybody is very hardworking um, from top to bottom, especially from the bottom. Uh, this town and, and Toronto and everywhere, Georgia, Atlanta, where people are working on sets, you have people working um, as gaffers and lighters and set designers and props and cameras and sound and it, the list goes on and they work longer hours than my dad who was a carpenter and he would get up at six but he would come home at six uh, whereas my uh, team players that work on the set of Shadows work really long hours but everybody does it um, with really great integrity. So I would, I would just like to, to say that how it is in Hollywood, there's a lot of people working with lovely integrity, they're hard workers, they're artistic, and they're smart as all get out. And um, the experience on set is everyone has a really good time. There's a lot of vulnerability in what you're acting too. I would say there was moments where I felt vulnerable and I was like, did that work? Was that funny? And maybe I would like, doing my trailer and I wouldn't open the door for no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, um, you know, there's moments where you feel vulnerable, but at the end of the day, um, there's so many good people surrounding you that um, everybody involved on this show, and there's hundreds, um, are, are just some of the best people you'll ever meet. Yeah. Did I? I feel like that's true. I feel like you never, you know, you never want to be at a job that you don't want to bump into someone at five in the morning after working 16 hour days. And so I think that we're lucky, at least I feel like, you know, we're lucky to work on, on sets that uh, everyone's in it together. You're like a team. Like the people on Shadows who work on our show, like they love the show. They literally live and breathe it. The set designer, like, you know, the costumers, the, everyone, they go above and beyond. Everyone else could easily clock out. I only work nine to five and I'm out of five. Uh, as per my last email, don't interrupt, you know? <laughs> like, but in, 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 in Hollywood and in our business, you have to love what you're doing because the days are long, you know, and the years are short. And so, like, you miss a lot of birthdays and a lot of, you know, quinceañeras and a lot of graduations because you're doing your craft and you're so blessed to be doing what you love. But so it, hard you know, to get jobs. So hard to get job. But it's also hard to stop doing what you love to do because if you stop doing what you love to do, then you don't get to see your favorite show. And you don't get to see your favorite show if everyone was not doing and working at 150%. So I think that we're very lucky to work uh, with people in our in our casting crew and in, in our shows that are very, very in love with what they do. So, yeah. We're lucky. lucky. Thank you for watching. We couldn't do it without you. Couldn't do it without you. Thank you for your question. And thank you guys for being such amazing guests. We're all going to tune in October 21st for season six. And everyone, please put your hands together for the amazing Christian Paul and Harvey.
second panel that I have for today. Um, I don't know about the third one, which is the Anna family one, but I'll do the best as I can. Thank you guys for watching. Um, maybe doing clips or something.